I think what has surprised me, uh, which which was expected anyway, is essentially the the amount of uh, effort that has gone into connectivity on account of COVID-19 and the various initiatives that uh, international organizations like the ITU and indeed governments are taking on issues of connectivity, both at a policy and, and, and practical level. Uh, we've seen quite a lot of traffic migrate from areas, uh, city centers that had uh, very high traffic to uh, settlement areas, you know, uh, residential districts and, and so uh, governments, uh, regulatory organizations and indeed networks have had to uh, service those areas in terms of their traffic needs. And, and so that, that is the one thing that uh, I would say is pleasantly, pleasantly surprised me uh, during uh, that event. Uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, now, uh, in terms of rationale, as part of the strategies and actions to support the continental strategy on COVID-19 pandemic, the African Union established an action plan on ICT sector uh, COVID-19 response, in which uh, one of the long-term action items uh, was the efforts to harness the potential of emerging technologies uh, such as IoT, uh, 5G, in order to improve lives in Africa, and and the the main the main uh, assignment that was thrown as uh, at, at this organisation, being part of the African Union, was uh, strategies for 5G uh, deployment uh, in Africa, uh, and so the the process of developing the strategy was was you know. Uh, to establish a small experts group to work on this uh, based on uh, their own experience, that's based on their own expertise and of course benchmarks from other, other regions. And then the draft, uh, you know, it, about a six month period, uh, of course we had an earlier draft that came up within uh, three months, but uh, the draft was then formally, uh, you know, reviewed by uh, the member states and, uh, and uh, the associate members of this organization and indeed other uh, relevant stakeholders like the ITU's Radio Communications Bureau and indeed other uh, uh, experts from, from regions that share uh, or would be interested in in how Africa is using its radio resources. And then finally, uh, we held, we organized and held, uh, you know, a forum where uh, the draft was validated uh, both uh, by the membership, you know, uh, regions uh, contiguous to Africa uh, who are interested in our radio work and the International Telecommunications Union. And after that, you know, we, we sent out this as uh, to the membership for their implementation. Now, in terms of the key recommendations, uh, we, we've agreed to define and outline under the auspices of the African Union, you know, a, a 5G uh, roadmap uh, including plans and, and, and implementation timeline aimed at achieving a coordinated and harmonized regional 5G uh, deployment. Uh, that recommendation indeed recognizes the fact that global strategy and uh, not just uh, on aspects of, of spectrum is required for optimum implementation of 5G uh, in Africa. Uh, we've also agreed uh, in that document to adopt a regionally harmonized frequency allocations, especially for core 5G uh, frequency bands uh, in the area of 3.3 uh, stroke 3.4 uh, upwards to 3.6 uh, gigahertz. The third and, and important uh, recommendation is to consider reducing taxation on broadband devices and broadband internet. That has been uh, agreed on in a general sense and we've left it for member states to, uh, to use their goodwill working with the fiscal authorities to try and reduce uh, taxation on, 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 on devices for, for broadband and also to establish a, a policy and regulatory frameworks that encourage infrastructure rollout and, and sharing 
And then lastly, uh, and certainly by no means least, uh, consider making 5G spectrum for local and shared licenses in order to address the spectrum needs for verticals. In effect, uh, this is encouraging uh, and, and making 5G spectrum available for entities uh, such as, you know, organized manufacturing or mines who may wish to themselves deploy their own localized networks uh, for, for their own use. Well, there, there are many challenges, but uh, in terms of widespread adoption is, is, is the use gap. Uh, and by use gap, I, I, I mean uh, that we, we've seen uh, in the 4G uh, technology where some people within coverage of 4G services are unable to afford or, you know, the 4G devices or even services that, that are in those uh, locations. And so networks have rolled out these services, but uh, the, the tech up uh, is, is low on account of, 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 of such gaps, uh, you know. And, and we, we think that that will be the case with, with 5G to the issue of affordability of user devices as well as affordability of, of services uh, themselves. Uh, it's, it's fair uh, to think that that will be the case for, for 5G also. But uh, in terms of uh, infrastructure, uh, you know, yeah, for a faster rollout of these services, we still have you know, a lot of energy gaps in Africa, especially in the far flung rural areas where, you know, uh, you'd want to, or networks would want to deploy services, but uh, energy is, is not uh, available or, or reliable. Uh, we have, you know, uh, 5G would run on, on a, a fiber backbone and quite a lot of our rural population is, or, or areas are still not networked in terms of, of, of fiber. And so the backbone that uh, would enable such services is, is, would, be, would not be, be available readily uh, in, in those areas. So uh, infrastructure uh, challenges such as energy, you know, road networks, and 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 uh, you know backbone systems, especially in the rural areas, is also a challenge. Yes, indeed. Uh, thank you very much. Five uh, G has many potential use cases. Uh, in our case, we see super high speed internet as the main use case, uh, followed by you know possibly uh, Internet of Things. Uh, applications such as uh, smart, me smart meters, uh, a number of deployments for smart meters is, is ongoing in, in uh, a couple of countries in Africa. Uh, 5G is also deemed to be used in the fourth industrial revolution, uh, you know, related to high-tech industrial automation, such as uh, high-tech manufacturing. And indeed, there are companies in Africa that are already uh, deploying uh, such such technologies. So, but the key the key potential use case really we see as as high speed uh, internet. I think the ability to meet and interact as the comfort of one's home or office is, is the key is the key advantage. Uh, we are now having a dialogue with you. Ordinarily, we would have traveled to some place to have such a dialogue or uh, would have met in some event to have such a dialogue. So the, the sheer ability to, to meet and interact, exchange ideas, have a conversation at the comfort of one's office or, or home is, is the key uh, biggest advantage. And that also, you know, uh, increases uh, travel, I mean, productive time. Uh, because there is, of course, less less travel. Uh, there is quite an interesting uh, research by, I believe, the OECD uh, that, uh, especially for for you who are in the media world, that there is better and more information that is retained for future reference and use uh, when people uh, engage online as opposed to, to physical engagement, which which is which is good. But of course, uh, it's good for our environment in terms of carbon footprint. Less and less people uh, are traveling. 
uh, of course, the airlines are, are, are on the other side of, 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 the, of, of, the, of the equilibrium. But uh, I guess uh, the ability to interact and, and, and meet and, and have a conversation at the comfort of one's uh, home office is, is the single biggest advantage that I see.